Bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Amen. We are located 2000 Dallas Highway in the city of Villarica, Georgia. In the, uh, that, uh, look, listen, listen, listen. It is sleeting out here, amen, but we are bound and determined, amen, that we are going live this morning, amen. I know some of you might be out there on another channel or on another uh, link, but nonetheless, please, please, We are live, all the way live here in Villa River, Georgia, 2000 Dallas Highway. Amen. God bless you on this uh, MLK weekend. Amen. Uh, uh, we're just trying to do our best in this city. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We'll give you time to come on over if you can find us. Amen. I believe some of you are out there already. I can't say, oh, all right, okay. Well, come on in, somebody. Come on in. Find us. Find us. Find us where we are. Amen. I'll give you a couple of minutes. Amen. As we try to get ourselves set up. Uh, as you know, these things are kind of fluid. Uh, uh, one thing we found in serving the Lord, he's constant. Amen. But he ain't predictable. Amen. He's constant, but he ain't predictable. We have no idea from time to time how God is going to use us, how he wants us to walk, how he wants us to talk. All he asks is that we be willing vessels, amen, willing to go where he tells us to go, do what he tells us to do, say what he wants us to say, amen, because we are out here trying to save souls, amen, amen. trying to smash them back out of a burning hell, amen, and so we are just anxious and excited, amen, to be out here on this Sunday morning. I thank God, amen, that the musicians were able to take it in all the way from the city
Hallelujah. Good morning, Macedonia. Hallelujah. How many of you know we serve an awesome God? We serve a great God, a holy God, a right now God, a God who looks high, who is everywhere. Let's give him all the glory. Let's give him all the praise. This is the day the Lord has made. So we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. This morning our scripture reading is coming from a very familiar passage. Second Chronicles chapter 7 and I'm going to start with verse 12 this is one scripture we need to keep in mind every day amen, amen. and it reads as follows starting with verse 12 and the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for an house of, of sacrifice listen the next part says, If I shut up heaven, right. that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, so my pages were stuck together, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will hear their land. Verse 15. Now my eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto their prayer that they made in this place. 16. For now have I chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever and my eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. I have read to you 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verses 12 through 16. Blessed be the word of God for the people of God. Amen. And, we're, Amen. and we're going to go right into prayer. Father God, we love you. Father, we praise you. We lift you up, Lord God. We exalt you, Father. First of all, Lord God, we just come, Lord God, asking for mercy. Lord, forgive us for our sins, Lord God. Forgive us, Lord God, for not being obedient. The times we weren't obedient. Forgive us, Lord God, for the times we were supposed to get in your word and we didn't get in your word. Forgive us, Lord God, for putting the flesh first, Lord God, instead of walking in the spirit. One thing, Lord God, I know is that when we come to you, when we confess your word, Lord God, you will forgive us and cleanse us of all righteousness. So, Lord God, I just come before you, Lord God, lifting up to you the congregation in Macedonia, Lord God. Those who are in their homes, Lord God, watching on YouTube, Father God, as well as those who are here, Father God. I pray, Lord God, that you meet them at their point of need. Father God, I pray that you strengthen them where they're weak, Lord God. Where they're down, Father God, encourage them, Lord God. But more than anything else, Lord God, I pray that you strengthen them spiritually, Lord God. A lot of times, Father God, we do everything we can to strengthen our flesh, Lord God, but it's our spirits that need to be strengthened, Lord God. So as Pastor brings forth the word Lord God. I pray that your word will go forth in power, Lord God. That will dig down deep, Lord God. Separating the soul from the spirit, Lord God. Cause a transformation to take place in each and every one of us, Lord God. As you speak to us on today, Lord God, help us to yield, Lord God, to be obedient, Lord God. Because that is when we will see you move. That is when we will see your glory, Lord God. When we bow down, Lord God, and die to ourselves, Lord God. We just pray, Lord God, for all those who may be working today, Lord God. And we pray that you keep them safe, Lord God. I pray that all those who are listening, Lord God, that you protect their homes, Father God, from any damage from this weather, Lord God. And those, Lord God, who are traveling, Lord God, get them to their places safely, Lord God. We just praise you and thank you for what you're doing, Lord God. We praise you and thank you for your love, Lord God. We praise you and thank you for never leaving us nor forsaking us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, when we fall down, you get us back up, Lord God. We thank you for being our strength. We thank you for being our presence.
you. Just a few announcements, amen, on this Sunday morning. Uh, first of all, let me just thank all of you for being patient with me. Um, I try to be uh, accurate, as accurate as I can possibly be. Amen. God bless you. And so I know that I told you we are not going to uh, have church, amen, but we're trying our best to be out here for as long as we can. You know, being in small churches, sometimes it's hard. Amen. We don't have the technology sometimes that the larger churches have. But how many of you know we still got Jesus? Amen. We still got Jesus. And we are called to serve him. When the road gets rough, we are still called to serve him. Amen. Sometimes my heart just won't let me give in. Amen. So thank you again for cooperating with your uh, schizophrenic, if you will, uh, pastor. Amen. God bless you. God on this Sunday morning. I uh, don't want to, uh, I want to remind you, amen, that we are on uh, YouTube for this Wednesday night's Bible study. Amen. So please uh, be on Zoom with us. Amen. At uh, 7 o'clock Zoom, 7 o'clock. And we will uh, in, be in study. Amen. And then uh, we will be back here on next Sunday morning. Amen. Uh, at 10 o'clock, if the Lord says the same for our morning services. Now listen, we will not be here on this coming Thursday to collect tithe and offering, but we still are operating in under cash out. So don't forget to send your money or your tithes and your offerings in cash out. Many of you have been doing that. I thank you. I applaud you for your support because it makes a difference. Amen. How many of you know that the bills still go on? Amen. God bless you. And we try to put our tithes and our offerings to a special use. Now, let hold on just a second. I just needed to turn around here because I do want to uh, uh, give you a special announcement. Amen. Now, this Sunday, today, January the 16th, amen, at 4 o'clock, January today, 16th at 4 o'clock, uh, the DeKalb County pastors are going to be gathering in um, a church on that side, DeKalb County, somewhere in Decatur, uh, <clears throat> for prayer. They are going to be gathering for prayer. The mes message says this, I pray all is well as you receive this message. I am so excited to announce a countywide pastor's prayer service on this Sunday uh, at 4 o'clock. We are calling all DeKalb County pastors to come together for our nation the state and the county. But I said, if they're coming together for DeKalb County, we're gonna tag in and come together for Carroll County, Douglas County, Rockdale County, for every county in Georgia, amen, Cobb County, amen. So they're calling together the pastors to come and pray, amen. And they are going to be standing on 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people, it was just read for your presence. Now, however, for those of us who are not pastors, we can uh, connect with them via Zoom. Let me give you the member ID number. Let me give you the member ID number so that you can tag in to Zoom so that you can be praying quietly as they are gathered and praying together. Because if you are not a pastor of DeKalb County, you are not getting into this building. Amen. So the main meeting ID number is 830-1934-8342. Again, the meeting ID number is 830 one nine three four eight three four two. The passcode is two one zero one seven seven. Again, the passcode is two one zero one seven seven. Now we will come back at the end of the service and give you this information again uh, so that we can be a part of this prayer service for our state, for the United States itself, 
and our county. Since they are praying for uh, DeKalb County, we are going to pray for Carroll County, uh, Rockdale County, Paulding County, where, where, whatever your county is, that's the county you pray for. Amen. So we want to thank you for that and being attentive, and we pray that you govern yourselves accordingly. At this time, we are going to ask Reverend Ray, if he would, Danley, if he would come up, please, as we acknowledge the Martin Luther King uh, Day, Junior Day, on tomorrow, he's going to come up and remind us. Amen. Put your hands together for Reverend Ray Danley. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to be reading Martin Luther King. I have a dream speech to you on today. So please bear with me as I read this. Five score years ago, a great America in whose symbolic shadows we stand today signed the Emancipation Proclamation. This momentous decree is a great beacon, beacon light of hope to millions of Negro slaves who have been served, seared in the flames of withering injustice. It came as a joyous daybreak to end the long night of our captivity. But 100 years later, the Negro still is not free. 100 years later, the life of the Negro is still badly crippled by the municipalities of segregation and the chains of discrimination. 100 years later, and the Negro is still not free. Later, the Negro lies on a lonely island of poverty in the midst of a vacant ocean of material prosperity. 100 years later, the Negro still is languishing in the corners of American society and finds himself in exile in his own land. So we've come here today to dramatize a shameful condition. In a sense, we've come to our nation's capital to cash a check where the architects of our Republican wrote the magnificent words of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. They were signed a promissory note to which every America was to, fail, was to fall heir. This note was a promise that all men, yes, even black men as well as white men, will be guaranteed the unlineable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We must forever conduct our struggles on the high planes of dignity and discipline. We must not allow our creative protest to degenerate into physical violence. We must not lead us to, di to distrust all white people, for many of our brothers, as evidence of their presence here today, have come to realize that their destiny is tied with our destiny. All right. We cannot walk alone. As we walk, we must make the pledge that we shall always march ahead. Awesome. We cannot turn back. All right. yes. There are those who are asking the devotes of civil rights, when will we be satisfied? Mm -hmm. We can never be satisfied. Right. As long as a Negro is the victim of unspeakable horrors of police brutality. We can never be satisfied as long as our bodies, heavy with the fatigue of travel, cannot gain lodging in the motels of the highways and hotels of the cities. Uh -huh. We cannot be satisfied as long as the Negro, Negro's basic mobility is from a smaller ghetto to a larger one. Uh -huh. We can never be satisfied as long as our children yeah. are stripped yeah. of their adulthood and robbed yeah. of their dignity uh -huh. by silence by stating for whites only, yeah. we cannot be satisfied. Right. As long as a Negro in Mississippi cannot vote, and the Negro in New York believes he has nothing for which to vote for, yeah. we cannot be satisfied. Right. No, we're not satisfied and we will not be satisfied until justice rolls down like waters yeah. and righteousness like a mighty wind. Yeah. I say to you today, my friends, yes. even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, we still have a dream. Yes. It's a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. Yes. I have a dream that one day yes. this nation will rise up, yes. live out the true meaning of its creed. Yes, we hold these truths to be 
self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the Red Hills of Georgia, sons of former slaves and sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day, even the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of injustice, yeah. sweltering with the heat of oppression, yeah. will be transformed into an, an oasis of freedom and justice. Yeah. I have a dream mm -hmm. that my four children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Uh -huh. I have a dream. Uh -huh. I have a dream that one day in Alabama, with this vicious racist, yeah. with this governor having his lips dripping yeah. with the words of in interpretation and nullification. One day, what? right here in Alabama, yes. little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. Right. This will be the day when all God's children yeah. will be able to see this new meaning. Yes. My country, Tizafi, Sweet land of liberty, O oh, thee I sing. Land where my father died, land of the pilgrim's pride. Yes. From every mountainside, let freedom ring. Uh -huh. And if America is to be that great nation, freedom rings from the mighty mountains of New York. Let freedom ring from the Hilton and the late Himalayas of Mississippi. Yes. Let freedom ring from the snow capped Rockies of Colorado. of California. Yeah. But not only that, let freedom reign from Stone Mountain, Georgia. Yeah. Let freedom reign from Lookout Mountain of Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah. Let freedom reign every hill and every mohill of Mississippi. Yeah. From every mountainside, let freedom reign. When we allow freedom to reign, when we let it reign from every city and every hamlet, yeah. from every state and every city, we will be able to speak that day when all God's children, yes, black men and white men, yes, Jews and Gentiles, yes, Protestants and Catholics will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, yes. free at last, yes. free at last. Yes. Thank God Almighty, yes. we're free at last. Yes. Thank you. Amen. Free at last. Free at last. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank God. This is our first time being in church since last year. First time being in church in 2022. Yeah. God has been good. So many did not make it, but we made it. Yeah. Sickness and all, we made it. And my hallelujah belongs to you. Your hallelujah belongs to him. Yeah. How many can know that he deserves it? 
was in a series, I began a series on last week, amen. Um, we serve an always God, amen. And, and though I'm going to be talking about an always God, amen, a God who never leaves us and a God who never forsakes us, amen. I'm going to deviate, amen, just a little bit from my title, amen, and come out of the series, amen. And uh, this morning I want you to turn, if you will, to Job, the second chapter. Job, the second chapter. Thank you, Sister Angela, Brother Justin, for coming in, amen, and helping us this morning, uh, on this, this Sunday morning with our services, amen. We try to do it to the best of our abilities, and sometimes we just uh, have to do it, go it alone, but then there are other times when God says, you know, if you can come in, come in, amen. God bless you, amen. That's Job, the second chapter, and we are going to be reading verses 1 through 6. Seven. Amen. Job 2, 1 through 7 reads, And again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. Yeah. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And my Lord, amen, we are living in the times where Satan yeah. is running yeah. rapid yeah. on this earth. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Verse 3 says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou not considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, and a perfect and upright man, amen, one that uh, feareth God and escheweth evil, and still he holdeth fast, fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without a cause. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thy hand now and touch his bones and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. Amen. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thy hand, but save his life. So we, uh, so went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore, sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, it is in the name of Jesus we come to you. Father God, uh, seeking your face, Lord God, on yeah. this Sunday morning. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that we are being led by your spirit, Lord God. Oh, Father, I ask you now to forgive me for whatever sins that I've committed, Lord God, and I ask that you cleanse me, Lord God, that I might speak to your children, that I might bring a word that they can hold on to, Lord God, to get through whatever situation or circumstance circumstance that they might be in on this Sunday morning. Dear God, I just thank you now again that you prepare their ears so that they might hear. Lord God, because again, you promised me that your word goes out and it never returns unto your void, but it always goes out and it accomplishes what you set it out to do. So Lord God, do your word, Father God. Work it up like it never worked it before. For it is in Jesus' name we do pray and ask it. Amen. Amen. And amen. You may be seated, if you will, amen, in honor of God's word. Again, uh, we have been in a series, and always God, amen, and this, um, yesterday, uh, as we were in prayer services, the Lord touched my heart that we might deviate, amen, from that series, amen, and, and, and so, uh, but what I want to do, and so I won't be talking about that this morning, but then in some ways I will, because we do serve an always present God who is always on the job, always healing, always always providing, always giving, always loving. We just serve an always God. Yeah. Amen. 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 And there's not a word you can think of that God ain't. Amen. Because God is everything. He's all powerful and he is always all knowing. Amen. Amen. And so uh, with that being said, amen, we were in, uh, I want to use for a subject. Let me go back here. I want to use for a subject. It can be worse. Amen. amen. It could be worse. It could be worse. Amen. And so yesterday morning we were in prayer services. Amen. And, and as we were going around and praying, amen, there's a young man, amen, that always come in prayer services and, and I always have an attentive ear to what he says in his prayers. Amen. Because, because from the time that I came here over seven or eight years ago, I've seen a growth in this young man's life. Amen. And so God has been dealing well, with this young man and his wife in a lot of 
But in the midst of it all, how many of you know on, it could be worse? Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because when I read the books of slavery, and then I'm reminded about how they were whipping us with on our backs, amen. Yeah. To the where it feels like they whipping us on our back. Back then, my forefathers, amen, were being whipped on their backs, amen. My yeah. foremothers were being whipped on their backs, amen. Yeah. But ain't nobody, hey, this generation now say you whipped up my back. Better not dare whip me on my back. Yeah. Come on now. Not in this generation. Oh, no, 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 no. You can go, go ahead. Amen. Amen. Uh, 
He killed Job's children. Am I right about it? Amen. Yes, sir. It destroyed his uh, house. Amen. His household, his animals. Amen. Amen. He just took away everything that Job had. Amen. But let me remind you, amen, that Job must have reframed that thing. Amen. Because I don't know about you, amen, but if God
uh, rules and regulations and they talk about what they can't do. Oh, we just gonna, we got to have our mask off or we got to have our freedom. Hey, baby, I'll be reading CDC stuff to test show for God to show me how to reframe that stuff and get around it so I can do what he tells me to do. Amen. Because if I just went about CDC's guideline, how many of you know I wouldn't move? Amen. I'd be stuck all the way up in the house, huh? How many of you know that I'd be stuck on the wall like Trump? Amen. How many of you know that when I read CDC, I read it for God to show me how can I do what I gotta do and do it safe because I know you're with me. You gonna keep me. You gonna preserve me. And if I get COVID, you gonna keep me. So how many of you know we have to remember who we are? Remember whose you are. Amen. So I told you who you are and whose you are. Amen. Amen. Whose you are. Amen. And Job knew who, who he is, who he is, and who he isn't. Amen. Who he was and who he wasn't. Amen. Job remembered. Amen. And so he remembered he belonged to God. Amen. And so Job held fast and Satan, he came down to Job this time. Verse 4 says that. And then and, and Satan told him, okay. Skin for skin. In other words, I'm getting ready to mess up Joe's skin. Yeah. Amen. And I guarantee you, he gonna die. He gonna cuss you. He gonna cuss you, Lord. He's gonna curse you to your face. Amen. So God tells him, he says, you can put forth your hand on his skin and, his, and you can touch his bone and his flesh. That's what the word of God said. Am I right about it? Yeah. Oh, it said, you can touch his flesh and you can touch his bones. Right. He said, but you better not to take his life. Amen. How many of you know that God still is in control? Yes. God is in control. Yes. Satan can't bring no more on us than God allows him to bring on us. So understand and know that what you're going through is because God has allowed you to go through what you're going through because he knows that you got the strength to bear up, amen, under the pressure, amen. How many of you know that in and now we're going through? We have to learn how to reframe these things, amen. Worse. Amen. It could have gotten worse. Amen. Amen. What are you talking about, Pastor? 
because God could have given him permission to take Job's life. Yes, mm -hmm. there you go. But God is a keeper. But God. And he limits, amen, what we can go through. He knows Yes, just how much we can bear. We can bear. Amen. Amen. He knows how much we can bear. Amen. God bless you on this Sunday morning. I want you to always remember, I didn't want to stay before you long, but God said to remind my people this Sunday morning. Amen. It could be worse. What are you talking about? Amen. Let me just go on here. So Aaron, I know I brought you back in, but I got something else to say. Amen. Let me say this. Amen. They were talking this this week about how uh, 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 the uh, finances or uh, things are increasing. Amen. Amen. It's increasing. Mo we pay more money for groceries. Uh -huh. We are paying more money. But then they say it's increasing because the people are able to buy it. Uh, amen. Now that's the craziest thing I ever heard. <laughs> but economics are increasing because the people can't afford to buy. So what are you talking I'm saying this to you. It could be worse. Could be worse. You, are, you, look, you don't necessarily have to have the money to buy what's going on and take care of your household in the midst of this mess. When I think about what went on just as late as yesterday when we had a tsunami on the coast of California. Mm -hmm. Never that I can ever Remember that a tsunami has come on the coast of the United States. Right, come on, now, come on somebody. All right, come on. But if I remember correctly, I don't remember them talking a, a whole host of folk. Amen. Had died. All right. Amen. All I know is that when the tsunami came, it did what it had to do, but it could have been worse. Yeah. Invitation. If anyone wants to become a Christian, wants to become.